time to look at this cheap multimeter that I got in the mailbag uh, a couple weeks back. Uh, mailbag, which one was it? I don't know. I'll put a link up there. Uh, anyway, this is one that um, that my Patreons requested that I grab and take a look at. It is a super cheap multimeter. Not quite as inexpensive and cheap as this one, um, which, when I tested it, uh, proved to be relatively good, actually. I mean, it's not reliable, it's not durable, but it's accurate. So for hobby use, that's reasonable. Let's see if this guy, the XL830L, lives up to that uh, cheap meter. So, let's see now, the first thing about it is these leads. They're, where's this other one here? I'm just going to keep that one out there. They're thinner, actually, than these ones. They're about as flexible. They're just vinyl. They're not what I got on this meter, this fluke. These are proper professional silicone leads. And this is going to be my reference uh, when I'm testing the accuracy of that guy. Uh, this is one that I borrowed from work, the Fluke 289. It's relatively new. It hasn't been bouncing around in the back of a truck for multiple winters or anything. Back to the matter at hand. So these cables that come with it are really thin and wimpy, so you'd want to change those out probably. However, these banana jacks on here are goofy and weird and non-standard. They plug into that one? They do. Where did that lead go? Well, those ones plug into there. Yeah, okay, so you can use those with it. But what about a better set? Here's a slightly better set that I got in, a, in another mailbag a long, long time ago. Um, and these are plug compatible with a good pro meter like the Fluke. No surprise there. Will they plug into there? Hmm. They seem to be, though they're not holding very tightly. They're not making a good solid connection. What about over here? No, they don't, they didn't fit that one either. So that could be a bit of a headache. You can see the comparison in size. Here is the one on our new cheap meter and there's from the previous cheap meter. And just for reference, there's the fluke. So there's not really room for a lot of copper in there. So since this one claims to be able to do up to 10 amps, I would expect those leads to get toasty warm. Let's pop this guy open and uh, see what's in it. That's a nice touch. That's, I mean, all the good professional meters have a rubber bumper around them as well. Um, so that's, I guess, a good thing. One Phillips screw to take the battery door off. Not a captive screw, so you can lose it. 9 volt battery holder in there and then two more screws to get the back off. Is there another screw up under there? No. What's holding that on up there? Just clip. Okay. There's those screws. Right. So what do we got? We have the ubiquitous blob. We have... What the hell is that? Initially, I thought that might be a reed switch, but yeah, I think that is the fuse. Wow. Oh no, it says it's unfused. So we have the trippy chirp over here. We have the LCD up there with its backlight. That's one thing that it has over its cheap cousin. It's got a backlight. And it's got a hold switch as well. Okay, those are interesting um mr blob chip uh well, let's say r0100 so that would be probably the, yeah that's the current shunt okay for the for the current measurement um 
This soldering looks dull and crusty. Can you see that? That should be nice and shiny, not dull and crusty like that. That one's a little bit better. How is it on some of the components? Or this hand soldered on capacitor for whatever reason. I wonder why those are like that. That looks ugly, doesn't it? So, do we go any deeper? Yeah, maybe. Just for the fun of it. See what's under the board. I'm guessing there's just going to be the rotary switch and a few switch contacts and not much else. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Just that. The zebra stripe for the LCD. That should be interesting to get back together. Hopefully it lines up. Those zebra stripes are just freaking magic. I don't understand how they work so consistently. I guess those screws align it, but I would have expected a lot finer alignment on that kind of thing. But what do I know? I'm just a hack. So it looks like there's a little calibration potentiometer there. Not sure exactly what it would be calibrating, but I certainly don't want to mess with it. And I guess the first thing we ought to do is turn them on. So it's a not an auto ranging meter; it's a manual ranging meter, um, which is fine. Most of the cheap ones are, right? Even where's my it's my ancient Radio Shack meter it was manual ranging as well. I'm also not going to pull this one out to try because the last time I was testing meters, it proved to be inaccurate which explains the failures of a lot of my youthful projects. Let's see if this guy's going to treat people any better. So I'm on the 20 volt range and it shows the name of the range in the screen, which is really handy. And when you go to a high voltage range, 600 volts in this case, it shows you a little lightning bolt. Same thing in AC mode, but it's not showing you that you are in AC mode here, just that you're in a 200 mode. So it's not showing you the unit, but it is showing you at least the range. That's cool. So there is, there's the uh, backlight feature, which, but there's no way to turn it off. Other than turning the whole meter off, that's kind of sucky. And then there's the hold. So what does the hold do? Does it hold the, the reading? I guess, maybe? Yes, it does. Okay, that's useful. And then tap it again and removes it. Again, that's that's another feature that this guy doesn't have, but pretty much any other good meter does. This one does. 7.834 on the fluke. Let's do this in the same polarity. 7.83. That's close enough to the same. That's pretty much bang frickin' on. Let's try a lower voltage here. And actually, let's drop down into two volt range just cause. 1.487. The Fuchs auto ranging, so I'm not too worried about it. 1.486. A thousandth of a volt out, really. Close enough. People are going to complain about this. I'm going to say that thing, even though it claims it says it's got a voltage rating and that it's a Cat 2 600 volt rated, there people are going to say you're an idiot to trust this. Yeah, maybe. But you never know. I mean, yeah, these leads are probably the most dangerous part. And that could go up in smoke, I guess. Okay, 121.2, 120.1, That's probably well within its tolerance, though. 
Uh, what does it claim for tolerances? In the AC voltage range, uh, in the 200 volt range, claims to be uh, plus or minus 0.8%. It's a lot closer than that. That will do. Just to give the pearl clutchers something to really worry about, let's try this. 232. Let's hold that. Oops. 600 volt range. Right. Did I break anything? 232. 232, 233. That's well within spec. Nice. Okay, what else have I got? Let's try resistance. Go down to the 200 ohm range there. And just the range there. So first of all, let's just see what the leads read as. 0.14 ohms. Okay, 0 0.13. 0 0.16. 0 0.17. 0 .6, 0 .7. Okay, if you say so. So let's, uh, we use my little decade resistance unit here. Let's get eight ohms on there just for fun. Now again, this is not going to, I'm not testing the raw accuracy of this against this because I don't know how accurate this is. I'm testing these two meters against each other to tell me what's, uh, what's what. So for reference, Get a third hand here 8.38 that's what that guy says Eight point eight. Eight point nine. Eight point eight. 8.9 8.8 so that's half an ohm out hmm at a low level okay that's not not exceptional but is that going to kill your project I don't know and we'll see if it can read 100k. That's the, yeah, that's in the right range. 99.80. 99.8 in the 200. Right. I was in the wrong range. 99. So that's that's close enough. Let's go big to two meg range. Let's put about, oh, let's put 9 meg on there. 8.992, call it. I don't have enough digits over here anyway. Okay. Let's move this guy down a little bit. See if we can see it at a lower level here. No? Wow. So what is that? That's 2 meg and it can just barely see it. Okay. So let's go about 1 and a half. What is that? Yeah, one. that should be 1.5 meg. Okay. 1.499, 1.501. And the big boy, 1.499. Okay, so as long as you stay within its capacity, you're, you should be good. What does it claim? Plus or minus, holy shit, plus or minus 10% in the 2 meg range. As long as you're, you're staying down in the lower ranges, it seems to be fairly accurate. I'm going to set up a current test here. One moment, please. All right, I've got uh, a little over 10 volts set up on this power supply. Uh, and I've got a nominally 100 ohm resistor here power resistor set up in series to give us very close to 100 milliamps let's just hold that there and i'll quickly switch things around and see what this guy does okay so same test leads same test clip same resistor the only difference is the meter and its own leads and that is 99 point that is 100 that's there's the comparison. That's pretty damn close. That's good enough for that uh, that kind of a current range. 
Well, let's try a low current first and then we'll go with a high current. Okay, I've still got my 10 point, almost 11 volts over here. And I've got 5.4 meg on here. And this meter says that I have two microamps. Hold that and switch the leads around. I don't even know if this guy can read that low, but we'll see. Wow, two microamps. Okay, that's impressive, actually. Let's set up something high current. So this is about as high current as I'm going to go with what I've got right here. I've got this guy set up to a two amp uh, current limit. Um, set to just about 11 volts and two amp current limit. Two point, there you go. I'll turn him on. I have a 0.47 ohm resistor, five watts. So I shouldn't cook anything, hopefully. Um, on the fully 10 amp mode on both of these meters. Okay, I've got the fluke hooked up. 2.03, and this guy did current limit. I think you can see that at the corner of your eye there. And now this guy, 2.04, 2.03. That's pretty good actually. And didn't seem to explode, so that's good. What else do I have left to test on this thing? I guess we can go into the diode test mode um, and see what that does. So here I've got some 1N4004 rectifier diodes. 0.56 volts forward. And what does this guy say? 0.488. Okay, that's a little bit off, but it's I mean it's it's telling me that it is a diode. I guess that's something. What I got in here is an old-fashioned red LED. Okay, that even lights it and it shows me that I got a 1.78 volts. Okay, that lights it too. Can you see that? Yeah, that lights it too. One point. Come on. But it's not giving me a voltage. Let's try this yellow LED. I can see a little bit of illumination. Can you see that? But again, it's not showing me a forward voltage up there. It's a little sucky for doing LEDs. For regular dials, it's fine. Um, the other thing that this guy has, it has a little transistor tester here. I don't like those on meters. They don't tell you very much. And you need to know what pins you've got on an unknown transistor before you even plug it in. Um, you need to know where the collector, emitter, and base is. Would you know that on an unknown transistor? Yeah, maybe if you get lucky. That's kind of a waste of your time. If you want to be able to test transistors, just get one of these things. They'll do it all for you. They'll tell you what the what the gain is. They'll tell you what the pinouts are. They'll tell you if it's NPN or PNP. This guy does none of that. So, is this a good meter? Not really. It's an acceptable meter. It's a decent beginner meter. As long as you're not going anywhere near the, the extreme ends of the ranges, you'll be fine. Um, voltage, there was it was bang on with uh, Big Daddy Fluke over here. Current, it was surprisingly accurate. Resistance, at the lower ranges, it was fine. Um, up in the mega ohms range, it was useless. Um, as a diode checker, for straight up diodes, yeah, it's good for continuity. It's good, but it's slow. You want the continuity beeper to happen as soon as you touch it, not just, yeah. Then again, I don't think this one's much better. Actually, no. 
it is better okay for that so that's that's something um i wasn't expecting that actually because this guy was like 10 bucks i think this thing was a little bit more it was still quite affordable though for somebody who's got a really limited budget either one of these would be perfectly adequate to get started would i use it professionally hell no that's what this is for or this um no not professionally if you're an electrician would i say this hell no no you'll kill you'll you'll blow things up if you use one of these well maybe maybe not but you're gambling and no just no if you're doing tube circuits absolutely not unless you want a shower of sparks um this thing tops out at 600 volts i wouldn't go anywhere near that the 220 that i used here i wouldn't do that in the real world just on my bench here just for dicking around okay fine once sure um but yeah for what it is as long as you keep in mind what it is that it's a cheap meter for doing basic stuff with on your workbench around your house for learning electronics for somebody young yeah it's accurate in the ranges that you normally need it to be resistance is where it falls down a little bit but again somebody who's starting out with electronics probably isn't going to be playing around up in the mega ohms for normal arduino level kind of stuff it's perfectly fine so yeah that's a quick and dirty review well not as quick as i thought dirty review sure um i'm sure you guys have some comments down in the uh and you can leave them down below as a usual um thanks to the folks over at patreon for suggesting that i take a peek at this thing um i've got another expendable multimeter around here thanks for watching uh comments questions down below i will talk to you later